In the name of Almighty God, Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Good morning and welcome to this, our service on the second Sunday of Easter. I trust you're keeping well and you've had a holy and blessed Easter as we journey through, still now in the octave of Easter. Let us start with our first hymn. Jesus Christ, risen and triumphant Saviour, we come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess to you our weaknesses and unbelief. We have lived by our own strength and not by the mercy of your resurrection. In your mercy forgive us, Lord hear us and help us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes as faithful and faithless and not believing. In your mercy forgive us, Lord hear us and help us. We have lived for this world alone and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by God's Spirit and raise you to new life. In Christ our Lord. Amen. And we sing now the Gloria.
So let us pray. Almighty Father, you have given your only Son to die for our sins and to rise again for our justification. Grant us so to put away the leaven of malice and wickedness that we may always preserve you in pureness of living and truth. Through the merits of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Men of Israel, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders and signs, which God did among you through him, as you yourselves know. This man was handed over to you by God's set purpose and foreknowledge, and you, with the help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him to the cross. But God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death, because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. David said about him, I saw the Lord always before me, because he is at my right hand. I will not be shaken, therefore my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will live in hope, because you will not abandon me to the grave, nor will you let your Holy One see decay. You have made known to me the paths of life, you will fill me with joy in your presence. Brothers, I can tell you confidently that the patriarch David died and was buried, and his tomb is here to this day. But he was a prophet and knew that God had promised him on oath that he would place one of his descendants on his throne. Seeing what was ahead, he spoke of the resurrection of the Christ, that he was not abandoned to the grave, nor did his body see decay. God has, has raised this Jesus to life, and we are all witnesses of the fact. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. When it was evening on the first day of the week and the doors of the house of the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After this he, he showed them his hands and his side and then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came, so the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them, and although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Here, put your finger here and say, see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord, my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. 
But these are written so you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and through believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. May I speak in the name of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. In our Gospel reading we now move into a very important phase in the life of the Church. The immediate post-resurrection experience of his disciples. This period is crucial and on it hangs the whole reason for the existence of the Church and the very basis of our faith. It is during this period between the resurrection and the ascension that Christ showed himself to his followers and particularly to the Apostles. And it is only from their accounts that we have evidence for the resurrection itself. If these accounts are not convincing, then on what else can we base our faith in Christ and in the key doctrine upon which everything else hangs? This is where the account of Thomas's encounter with the risen Lord is so important. He is a sceptic, if ever there was one. His scepticism is well known that has become proverbial. We know him as Doubting Thomas. And if he could be convinced, then surely anyone could. It says in the text that Thomas called the twin. This is a significant enough detail for John to mention it. Yet somehow neglects to tell us why Thomas was called the twin. However, there's a very old tradition that he was called the twin because he looked like Jesus. And this legend has a ring of truth about it. It sounds probable. It's just the kind of nickname that might well have been given. After all, just because they lived 2,000 years ago, we should not think that the Apostles didn't have a sense of humour. This man, who was probably being constantly mistaken for Jesus, so often probably that it had become a bit of a nuisance to him. So, when the others told Thomas that they had seen Jesus, who he knew had died on the cross, he surely believed that this was a mistake. After all, he was being confused with Jesus all the time. And so he may well have reasoned the disciples probably thought they had seen Jesus when actually it was someone else. To Thomas, it was probably just a case of mistaken identity. In the light of this, we can easily understand this and his consequent refusal to believe. He says he wants proof and even goes far as to say that he would put his fingers into the holes in Jesus' hands and feet before he would believe. But eight days later, when Jesus comes, he recognises him immediately and actually refuses Jesus' invitation to put his fingers into the holes. He then makes that wonderful testimony of faith, not only in the person of Jesus, but also in his divinity. My Lord and my God. His recognition is not only of the man Jesus, but also who he is, the Son of God that has come to save us. He is convinced, and by his testimony, so are we and millions like us. In this period, between the resurrection and the ascension, a lot of other very important things happen. At the beginning of our text today, we are told about one of them, that Jesus appears to the disciples in the upper room. He shows them his wounds, so there can be no ambiguity about who he is. He then breathes the Holy Spirit on them and tells them, those whose sins are forgiven, and those whose, are, those whose sins you retain are retained. This is something of vital importance. For by this action Jesus is communicating what he has achieved through his death and resurrection to the world. He died and rose again to free us from sin. He now mandates his disciples to bring his forgiveness to the whole world. The small band of disciples being given the task of bringing the presence of Jesus to the entire world and indeed also to the future generations of believers. They are to mediate Christ's forgiveness to everyone. This particular text has often been used as biblical justification for sacrament of reconciliation and rightly so. We must never underestimate the power and the effectiveness of this great sacrament or fail to acknowledge this institution by Christ himself. Just think how much peace has been brought to many, so by the time of, through the sacrament, reconciliation, or as often called, confession, 
throughout the centuries. Just think of the transformation it has made to millions of lives over the years. But it isn't just the prerogative of priests. It is a response to the whole church. We are all disciples of Christ and this ministry is given to us all. We may not all have the ability to confer the sacrament of reconciliation, but we have the duty to be reconcilers. We all have a duty to bring the fruits of resurrection to the world, to the whole world. We are, as Christians, primarily mediators of Christ's love to the world, and the most concrete manifestation of this is through the forgiveness of sins. Thomas began by doubting the resurrection of Jesus, but through his personal encounter with him, he was able to make one of the strongest statements of belief. The strongest statements of belief ever made. It is a statement of belief that has become an important element in the prayer life of Christians right up to our present day. Many people use the words of Thomas as a reverent prayer at the moment of the elevation of Mass. Nothing could be more appropriate at that moment. We disciples of Christ meet many people who are just as doubting as Thomas, but perhaps as a result of their encounter with Christ through us, too, they might come to believe in him. By experiencing the power of his salvation through our ministry, they might too be able to recognise Christ as their Lord and God. This is our task. This is our duty. This is our privileged role in the world. Let us declare our faith in God as we say together, we believe in God the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, we give thanks to you and remember your love has no end. Hear our prayers we bring before you. We pray for all those who are feeling isolated and alone. May the Holy Spirit bless and protect them and soothe their sorrow. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all those experienced pain and discomfort, for those who are sick, including Margaret, Baby Lee, Helena, Pauline, Bill, Rachel, Anne, Mike, Sylvia, Melanie, Karen, Lynn and Marco. May they have hope and reassurance for better days ahead. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all students undertaking exam revision. May their hard work and dedication be rewarded. Lord, in your mercy. As we find ourselves in the second quarter of the year, we pray this springtime provides us with opportunities to create happy and special memories with our loved ones, family and friends. Lord, in your mercy. For those who experience the pain of bereavement, may the ones who have died be enjoying the fullness of everlasting life. We remember Colin, Ethne, Jackie and Nikki. Lord, in your mercy. This Easter tide, let us renew ourselves in our faith and pray to be the best Christian disciples we can be. Jesus, we believe in you here and now and forever. Amen. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And let us sing our next hymn. <laughs>
the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's always right to give you thanks, God our Creator, loving and faithful, holy and strong. You made us and the whole universe and filled your world with life. And now we give you thanks because Christ, our Paschal sacrifice, has made us children of the light. Rising to new and everlasting life, Christ has opened the gates of heaven to receive the faithful people. Christ's death is our ransom from death and resurrection is our rising to life. The joy of the resurrection renews the whole world while the choirs of heaven sing for ever to your glory. Almighty God, on the night before Jesus died, Jesus shared a meal with his friends. Jesus took bread, thanked you, Jesus broke it, gave it to them, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. After the meal, Jesus took the cup of wine. Jesus thanked you and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, this is my blood, the new promise of God's unfailing love. Do this to remember me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ has ascended up on high. Almighty God, as we bring this bread and wine and remember Jesus' death and resurrection, send your Holy Spirit that we who share these gifts may be fed by Christ's body and blood. Pour your spirit on us that we may love one another, work for the healing of the earth and share the good news of Jesus as we wait for Jesus' coming in glory. For honour and praise belong to you, almighty God, along with Jesus and the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Alleluia! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast. Alleluia!
So let us pray. Lord God, our Father, through our Saviour Jesus Christ, you assured your children of eternal life and in baptism have made us one with him. Deliver us from the death of sin and raise us to new life in your love, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. to join with you today and I look forward to joining with you next week. If you are local tonight we have our service at Rescola, the Celtic service at Rescola. Uh, all are welcome to that and it will be followed by tea refreshments. Keep up to date by liking the St Joseph's page on Facebook and if you have any prayer requests please send them through. God who through the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ has given us the victory give you joy and peace in your faith and the blessing of God Almighty, Jesus and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and those whom you love, seen and unseen, now and for ever. Amen. We are raised to new life with Christ. Go in peace. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. <laughs>